Hey, what's up? I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and welcome to another video. This video, it's time for an update on probably my biggest game ever and the game that might never get finished at this rate. It's slightly frustrating me um, as the game developer. I have a deadline set for all the work. The game has to be done in November, which is coming very soon. Like, very soon. But luckily the game is in a good state. And why am I not naming that game? For all the new viewers, the name of the game is Regulator City. A top-down uh, tactical shooter with having a teammate running around. Last time I talked about it on this channel was me adding a local co-op, so two-player mode. And then we actually turned it into a split-screen mode, which was pretty cool how that actually worked out. That was all done in one week, a week vlog, I think three weeks ago, episode 342, pretty sure. But the week or two weeks after, I still had to change a lot of things and fix a lot of things because as cool as it looked in local player split screen, there were a lot of things, little tiny issues that I just had to figure out how to fix them iron them out, hunt them down. Not everything was apparent, but after playing a lot of games, I think all of that is now pretty much gone. And the problems were things like, where do you show the dialogues? Normally you show them centered on screen, but now you have two players. Do you still show it centered or do you show it on just the one side that the player is playing on? There's a lot of little things that you don't really think about, but they had to be sorted and solved. And I actually managed to do all that and a lot more. So let's quickly do the intro and then dive into the changes and improvements I've been making to the game in the last couple of weeks. So let's start with split screen mode. Let me show you where we are now. So the game is still single player and when you play it alone, you'll have an AI or an NPC or whatever we're gonna call it. He's running around with you. He can learn things and learn new skills. So he will be more useful over time. But now we can also ask a friend to hop into the game and play with us. The system I had to work out for this is controllers. I'm not sure how other games do it actually, but it would be the easiest if both players have a gamepad connected but I can imagine that the player number one is playing with mouse and keyboard or maybe even player two. So that also had to be a, an option. So that system is now completely sorted. I think it will work in most cases. So it can play with either two game pads or one can play with a keyboard and a mouse and the other person plays with a game pad. I also added in the recent couple of days a hot seat mode. So you can start a single player game but then let's say your friend or your spouse or brother, sister, whatever is coming in the room and wants to join in, they can join in at any time and the game will turn into a two player mode. I still have to figure out uh, if player two leaves, that should also be an option and then it will just continue with an AI again. That would be pretty cool to add. So that's the next thing I have to build into the game. But right now the hot seat mode is pretty cool. I'm not sure if that actually called the hot seat mode. Uh, but anyway, it's a jump in at any time mode and it works. And uh, it's becoming one of those Mondays that I don't like. I just was editing the video that everything you just saw, edited, started on the next little clip and it had no audio and all the other clips had no audio. So, so now I have to re-record everything I said and I hate that. I love creating videos, I love editing videos, but I hate redoing stuff. Anyway, what I've also been working on is the interface screens for Regulator City. And sorry if I'm now gonna rush the rest of the video. I'm, I'm done with it now. I'm still gonna make it fun, hopefully. I've been working on the interface screens. Um, wanted or had to change the character select screen because we now have two player mode. So two players have to also be able to use that same screen. I wanted to have one flexible screen that does both a single player and two player. So I had to redo that screen anyway. I made it look like the comic book style interface I originally envisioned when I wanted to create this game. However, I never made that screen work because then I added stuff and then over the time of developing the game, I come up with more and other ideas that probably need to be shown on that screen and it becomes a cluttered mess. So screens like this in all of my games, and I, I guess that's for most other game developers as well, you create them many times, unless you have a dedicated uh, designer who does these things and they have strict guidelines, this is how it should look. And that's probably a better way to do it, but I can't sit down and think about these things first. I just dive in, create the screen, have to have this type of information and then make it look good. 
and then hopefully it stays that way and I always uh, have to create that a couple of times because more info is has to be shown or I just don't like it or get bored with it after a while and if I get bored with it during game development people are not gonna like it in the final release so anyway that screen is completely changed now and I like it how it is right now one player two player mode um, also change the mission fail screen to also look like this one or closer to it so that we get one uniform interface design and look for everything in the game. Uh, still a couple of screens that need updating. I also don't like the intro animation. I'm gonna change it completely. I don't like the credit scene and about a, a couple of other things that need changing but they're not high priority right now. Now in the previous videos I recorded I was moving the camera around all the office but I'm getting hot. It's getting hot in the office. I'm gonna record everything on this video. Um, the other thing I've been working on is gameplay elements type thingies. The biggest one, I changed that last week, we had a power unit in the various levels. If for, for those that don't know the game, you play missions on different levels. It can be apartment, hospital, industrial, um, scrapyard, airfield, airplane area, pretty much variations in different things and different levels that look and play a little bit different, have a different layout, different type of stuff happening. Uh, but most of them had some sort of power unit. And if you got to that, you could disable it and the power would be off in the whole building. You have night vision goggles and you would run around taking out the enemies. Pretty cool idea. Problem here, the game design problem I created for myself. Night vision goggles was an upgrade item that you could get as an upgrade, but didn't have by default. So there were a lot of levels where I had the power unit there, but I couldn't operate it because I had no night vision goggles. And that's frustrating as a player. So I had to change that completely. Night vision goggles are now standard unit, standard inventory for your players. So you'll have them by default. It doesn't take up an inventory slot. It's just part of your helmet that you already wear or something. Um, so you can now always take down the power and move around in the night. Of course, that gives the player a huge advantage. So I also had to counterbalance that with enemies that now can also have night vision goggles. And even worse, those type of enemies will start spawning when the power is turned off. They won't spawn immediately, so you have some time to move around, do your thing, take out enemies and maybe even turn back the power before these enemies spawn. I leave that up to the player. You can be very tactical about it. Quickly do a certain thing, turn back the, on the power and you won't have these enemies spawn or just take your time, move around the building and these enemies will also be on your path and you just take them out. That's another option. But now the frustration of not having night vision goggles on a mission, not being prepared, that frustration is gone now. Another fun thing I've been adding is melee weapon type things. They were already in the game, but it were uh, the knife is your standard one and you can find a baseball bat that has a faster swing, I think, and maybe even does more damage when hitting people. Uh, but now I've added funny things like a frying pan. If you find a building that has a kitchen area, smash it to pieces and there's a big chance you'll find a frying pan as melee weapon. Um, I'll be adding pencils, staplers, and you'll find them near an office or a desk or something. Um, wrench, screwdrivers, hammers near somebody that's working on cars maybe or another industrial type area. Um, more of these little things, maybe a TV remote or a gamepad near the TV. Um, that would actually be a fun one. I have to write that down. I'm gonna add melee weapons like that to the game. It doesn't really change the game in any way, but it does add a lot of extra fun stuff and it's very easy to implement at this point. Just have to draw it, uh, copy some lines and change a little value data here and there and it's done. So we're gonna add a couple of those in between the actual job. Because most of my work from now on will be in level design. I need to design a lot more levels and I've been mentioning this in various videos now I think but I couldn't design these levels before because the game didn't have all the elements in there and I knew I would have to go back in and change levels. Already had to do that because like I just mentioned the power units uh, you can turn them on and off they are now much more interesting to add to levels so I've been going back through the existing levels to see if I could add rooms here and there have a power unit there and maybe have some interesting way to reach it or 
a difficult way to reach it so that you first have to find a key card before you can enter the room where it is. So I've been changing these levels now, but I also need to make a lot more uh, newer levels, uh, design more levels. And I had some comments on previous videos saying that uh, the game has a lot of narrow hallways and that this isn't a lot of fun. And I understand that uh, the game isn't just narrow hallways. It mixes up bigger areas with smaller areas and narrow, air, narrow hallways because that's pretty much the game. This is not a top-down shooter where you just shoot everything. There has to be some tactical element here and some strategy to it. As a player, you have to figure out how to best pass certain areas and how to best avoid getting seen and maybe hide between furniture or use the furniture to distract the enemies. All those type of things are available in the game. So now I just have to design these levels and make them interesting enough and have a certain balance of just pure action shooting with tactical and strategy type areas where the player is required to think a little bit about how he's going to pass to the other side of it. So uh, that's going to be a lot of work from now on. Level design, map design. Maybe I'll do one map design and record it as a future video in a couple of weeks time. Could be interesting and then talk a little bit about how the level editor works. It's built into the game. Still haven't fully decided if it's going to be released with the game but it's built in the game and it runs in the game. So that might be a cool video in a few weeks from now. And I just checked the last clip and we actually have audio now. So I don't have to do this a third time. I could have been done editing the video by now, actually 30 minutes ago, but I, uh, this happens every now and then. Um, and, it's, uh, and it messes up my day. I still need to do some admin stuff. I want to set up discounts for all my games on Steam, uh, Switch and Google Play. Um, I won't be setting them up for iOS because, well, most of my games are now gone from iOS. I have to update them. Uh, they still run and work, but Apple decided they are too old to keep them on the App Store. <sighs> I mean, this frustration, I, I think I'm mentioning this every year because it happens around the same time every year. The games are removed from the App Store just because they have not seen an update in a long time. But yes, Apple, I'm not updating my games because they run and work. They don't need an update. They work just fine, except you decided that they are old and have to be updated. And don't get me wrong, this also happens on Android because Google does the same thing. But it's a lot easier for me to update those versions because, um, first of all, for the iOS, I need my MacBook. So I need to dig it up. It hasn't been open for a year. So I probably need to update Mac OS. Then I need to update Xcode, which is Apple's uh, API, SDKs, development environment, all that stuff. Uh, signing in things, certificates. Then I have to update uh, my games on the Mac and see if they still run and work. And if not, have to fix that, update all the libraries, push a new version. Hope I can still do that because it changes every now and then. So I have to figure out that as well. It's just right now not worth it for me to invest time in that, which is a shame because there's only a few Orange Pixel games left on the App Store right now. So I have to at some point find time to fix that. But luckily for me, it doesn't matter much for discounts and sales because discounts and sales on iOS rarely gave me any extra revenue. I guess Apple users just don't like stuff cheap. They like stuff that's expensive. So maybe I should uh, increase the prices for a couple of days on the App Store. Haven't tried that. Not sure if that's possible, but it would be an interesting uh, experiment increase the prices now, double the price for the next three days, buy it now, Apple users, because you like things expensive. Okay, enough complaining and whining about that. Um, I have more things to do. So i like to thank you for watching. And if you have questions or comments about Regulated City or anything else, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and um, hop on the Discord, come say hi, and I will not see you next week, but you will see me next week, hopefully. But you will see me next. Wait, the news, the, you will see me. This is, is crazy. I think I should quit while I'm ahead. Bye.